now we've got all this information and we've got the ability to enter Team Rotor, we need to turn that into a visual that we can look at the information very quickly over a two week period and look at what's going on as far as the allocation within the team. So what I'm going to do here is go to the two week rotor tab now and let's think about what we need here. So we need their names obviously, we want their skill because we want to be able to sort that information um, and we want to look at you know look at visually whether they're working or not or what's been allocated what i also want to understand is if i've over allocated somebody in the rotor or whether we've got any duplication errors so for example i've put an entry in here for the same person for the same day i want to be able to pick those things up uh, as well within the two-week rotor so first things first is i'm going to need so I'm going to leave this first row blank here because I'm going to put some things visually in there. So I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm then going to need, I know I'm going to need their name and I'm going to need their skill. I want to know what work has been allocated over that period of time and I know what I want to know how many hours available and whether I've over allocated to them so I'm going to use this column so available hours I want to be able to see that I'm then going to need the day so let me I'm going to need some type of filter I want to I'm going to need some type of filter so let me just move that down for a second so i'm going to need uh, a sort by boy here and then i want that to be a drop down data validation there i'm going to need the the week starting date so so the week I'm also going to need separate days as well. So here's going to be the AM, PM. I want that then, I want to have days of week across there, so I'll know what days of week it is. So let's do days of week. Here, I'm going to have a hidden row. So that's going to be date of day in week because I'm going to be running some formulas off the data that's in in this particular row and then I'm going to want the um, the week starting date week starting date in there so I'm going to know I want to know what week the week starting date is so that's going to be hidden so I'm just going to put that there move that up like so so let's work out what's going in here so first of all that's an easy one it's going to equal it's going to equal the reference by this date here yeah so so I go into the two week rotor and do equals that there on big one do return there you go so that's that's straightforward i then want that to equal that date like so that there's can't type days of the week so and that is going to equal then another v lookup of the day so i'm going to go equals v look up the value is going to be that week number so that week day sorry so week day it's going to be that serial number and again it's going to be three and then i'm going to do a v lookup on the days of the week and I want the short number, so I think that's column three. 
an exact match and then close bracket and hit return and there we go so that works so this date now I want to calculate for the week so that equals that plus one in fact I'm actually going to need because I want an AM value and I want a PM value so actually that equals that and return yeah but I don't need that because I'm going to merge these together in, in a little while so then I want that to be equals that plus one and again I want that to equal that and again want that copy is that there that seems to work so if I take that if I take that and do a copy and then I paste it to the next set expand that paste again paste again one more so I've now got my my dates going across like so I then want this date here this date to equal that date plus seven and then I should be able to take this control copy and paste it like so so now I've got the dates going across and again I'm just going to highlight all of these double click just to expand them open for now and there we go so I've got the two weeks uh, of data so I've got my dates there and then I can start putting some formulas down here so I'm just going to take this as well copy okay so I've got my my calendar information at the top so let's look at getting this information here so I want I want to see information across here against these dates based on the names in here and do I have anything in the rotor for them so first of all I need to get I need to get my resource data or team data into here so I'm going to use the overspill functionality that's now available to us in Office 365. So I'm going to do equals and I'm going to sort. My array is going to be my table. Table team. And because I want to do a range here, I'm going to do two open square brackets. So one, two, and I'm going to take it from the name close that square bracket and then I'm going to do a colon single open square square bracket and choose skill set and then do a, a double close and if I just close that bracket off for a second and just do return what you can see now it's now populated this information for me and it's also well, it's brought some zeros through. So what it's brought through is all this information. It's picked up this blank row. So I don't want this blank row here. So if I go into this and change and, and wrap this in a, in a filter. So again, if I do filter, open bracket. So this is my array. So as far as what I'm including, it's gonna be the table, team open bracket name does not equal blank 
yeah so that's what I'm going to include then if I then just close it and hit return it's now filtered that information for me so it's now filtered that and it's removed the blank row and because I've done it based on a range from name to skill set that's what it's included now So I don't want you to be able to include a sort on this. So at the moment, it's just it's sorting it by the first column, like so. So it's by by name. Yeah. So that's what it's doing automatically. Uh, but what if I want to sort it by skill set? So let's put this drop down in here and then let's handle this here. So remember, we created a sort by in the static data, which is here, name and skill. So if I go into this and do a data validation, so again, do table. Oh, equals table, sort by. There, those two that have come up. Uh, so, so I know that works. So if I take that and I do control copy, and then just escape and then delete what's in there and then do data data validation settings is going to be a list so equals indirect open bracket quotation mark copying what I've just um, or pasting what I've just copied close it off with close quotation marks and then close again click OK and there's my my drop down so I'm just going to put a prompt in there as well for completeness so please select from drop down All stop. I'm just going to copy that, go to my error, sort by. You must let's place that. Oh, see, I've typed select incorrect. You must select from drop down lists. Let's correct it there as well. And then click OK. So if I put this in by name, and then we put an if statement. So I either I want to do this. So if I just take this value and just control copy for a second, and then I put it here. And again, just before I start joining formulas up, I want to work these things out. So within the sort part, as you can see, we're sorting. Here from team skill set. Now, if I click in there and do a comma, it's then asking me for a, a sort index. And because I want to, if that drop down equals skill, I want to sort it by skill set and by and then by name. And the way that I do that is I do an open squiggly line. And I do my first, which is going to be column two. I want to sort it by this column two, and then comma one, and then close squiggly line. Now, if I put another comma and then do a, a sort order, so it can be you know descending or ascending, is the default is always going to be ascending. And if I hit return there, so now what you can see, it's sorted them by the skill set and then by and then by the actual name. So that works as a formula. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to just copy that like so and do control copy and escape. Then on here I'm just going to put an if statement. So I'm going to go if that field there equals 
nine. Then do that. Otherwise, do that. As in sort it, do the sort by name, by skill and name. So, and then close bracket, hit return. I can just delete that formula there. So now if I change this to skill, it's now sorted the information accordingly. If I put it back to name, so that works. So now we've got our list of names. Now all we have left to do, well, we've got two more things to do. As far as the data and the formulas, which we need to get this to calculate based on what's over here and based on the date and what we've entered in the rota in the in the rota data. So the types of activity that we're looking at. So if I go to my static data and I just take this here, these types here, I'm just going to do a copy and go over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste the values in here, right? And all I'm going to do is do home paste values like so, just so I've got them as a reference. So I know the first one I want to do is not scheduled. So the formula for that, and I'm going to put the formulas of how I'm going to calculate all these against each one. And then before I start building up the formula, because this is going to be quite a chunky formula. So The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a count if. So what I'm looking for is this value for this date range, yeah, for this resource. So Andy, Andy Yellow. So it's going to be equals count ifs. So the range criteria is going to be table now table 8 I've obviously not named it so that's table 8 there and if I do a, an open bracket yeah I can see so and this is where it's important to name your table so I ain't got a clue what that table was then so I'm going to escape and I'm going to correct that so if I go into my rotor click in the table do table design do table rotor data like so and hit return and then if I go back to here and then start typing that formula again so equals count ifs table range criteria is table and there now I can see I know what it is now and if name now here's the thing so let me let me demonstrate it's the best way to do it so if I do count ifs so if name equals Andy yellow yeah and do close bracket and it's counted two right now obviously I want it to I'm going to copy it across the con so I want that to be always Andy so I'm going to do a dollar there against Andy's name so it holds the column but then I want it to move with the row reference as I copy it down if I copy this across like so there you'll notice it's got table name then it's got skill so what it's doing is it's moving relatively to if you copy it across it's then taking the next the next column heading from the table. I want that to be an absolute. I don't want it to change. And the way that you do um, an absolute reference is slightly different, is that you go into here and do a an open square bracket, double square bracket, the actual field, close square bracket, then do colon, open square bracket, then choose the same field, and then double square bracket like so. And now when I copy it across, it's fine. It holds it, it doesn't change it. So that's just something to bear in mind when referring to table columns. So let me just get rid of these here. So 
So that's the first criteria. Then the second piece of the criteria is I want to find against that table for Andy. So again, table, rotor data. So double square bracket, because I don't want it to move, is here against the AM. So I'm doing this for AM first. Yeah. Close square bracket, colon, open square bracket, and then I am again, and close square bracket where it equals not scheduled. So speech marks not scheduled, close quotation marks. And if I then hit return, so you've now got, now we know within Andy's, we've got nothing in there for Andy. So what I'm probably going to do here is we know we've got work against Andy because I want to make sure this is, this is working. Um, so I'm going to take that and control X and take it out of there. And I'm going to just paste it into here and change that to working. Let's just make sure we're picking up. So I'm testing the formulas as I'm writing it. So I've now got two, and I know that's that's right for Andy. Now the next thing that I want to I want to check is does the date here is the date the start date. So if we take Andy here who's working on the 23rd, is that start date equal to or less than that date? So, remember I'm looking at it from a finish, a start and a finish range. So, is the table data, double open bracket, Start, close, colon, open square bracket, start, double close square bracket. Criteria is going to be, so it's equal or, or less than. So you need to put the operators in quotation marks. So I'm going to put open quotation marks. So it's less than, equal to, then, and, the ampersand and then the cell reference here so I'm going to select that cell reference now again I want this row to be fixed but then for it to move across as I copy it across I want it to move relatively and again if I hit return so now what we've got is that we've got one so if I look at the rotor data and we can see Andy yeah, it should have one day based on that range. And the next thing I want to look at is I want to make sure that that date is equal to or less than the finish date. Yeah. The finish date. So the finish date is equal to or greater than that date. Yeah. Does that make sense? I'm talking here, expecting to get an answer from you. Um, <laughs> so the first sign of madness, talking to oneself. So I need to put in here, again, the next criteria. So table, rotor data, double square bracket, finish this time, close square bracket, colon, open square bracket and then finish and then double to close square bracket the criteria this time is i want to know if it's the finish date on the range has got to be equal to or greater than this yeah so i'm looking fundamentally between two dates including those dates so in andy's case in this instance the 23rd of october to the 27th uh, of october here so again it's got to be greater than or equal to close that quotation mark the ampersand 
and then the cell reference is the same. And again, I just I wanted to move with the column, so the column is relative, but fix the row. So again, do a dollar sign on the row. And if I hit return, so what I've got there now is I've got a value, and if I take that, so that now works as a, a count. So all I've got to do now is take this, just copy the formula, control copy, and I'm going to put it in each of these in each of these as well, and do control V. Then all I'm going to change here is make this as not scheduled. Everything else is the same. So that's not scheduled and hit return. Um, on unplanned leave, I'm going to do the same thing in here as well. Do control V, change working to uh, unplanned. leave return and then change this to vacation and finally the out of office one I know these work. Now, the thing that I want to create, so you should only ever get either zero or one. If you get something greater than zero, greater than one, sorry, then you know you've got an error. I've now got all these formulas here, but I need to do an error check. So fundamentally, I want to know, if I've got multiple ones again in here, I know that's a problem, that's an error. So I need to do an error check for, for each of these. So this one, and if I just take this and just move it to here, so it's relevant to where I'm doing the checks here, is that I want to do a check for all of these. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here, for each one of these, I'm also going to do a, a copy small copy and just copy those formulas into here should be able to just copy this across and it should be looking at 23rd still the same here it's still doing based on the way that I've fixed everything and all I want to do is I want to take this here and I want to replace the AM with PM yeah so what I do is I'm going to hold highlight all of those to control F and I'm going to find and I'm going to look at formulas as well I'm going to do open square bracket AM close square bracket and I'm going to replace that with open square bracket PM close square bracket and I'm going to do replace all and do OK so now, looking at this, you can see I've got not scheduled for, for Andy. So if, again, let's just check that for that day. And we look at Andy, 23rd to the... So on that, he's working and he's not scheduled in the afternoon. So that, that works. Let me just close that down. So let's go back to here. So now I've got the formulas now what i need to make sure is that all these eight together are not greater than one because we should only have one instance in there and the way that i'm going to do the the error check is i'm going to add all these together but i can't do some here can i and add so equals some and then add these together like so 
because I want to do it within the cell. Dynamically across the range. So the way that I'm going to do that is I need to put all these formulas into, into one. And I need to do that as an error check now for which includes all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to do control copy and I'm going to add this into there. Hit return. I'm then going to take the next one and I'm going to click in there, do control I to select all and do copy. Well, let's go select from the equal sign, don't want the equal sign, control copy escape at the top here I'm going to do plus sign and then control paste in the formula bar and then I'm going to take the next one control copy escape and I'm going to go up to here and because it's no longer in the formula bar I'm going to expand it by clicking the arrow and at the end of it just do plus Control, paste, and return. Then I'm going to take this one, paste, copy that, escape, back to the top here, click at the end, do the plus sign, and do Control V, and return. So we've now got a one. I then take this. And I do a control select that without the equal sign, do control copy, escape, and again plus sign and do a control V return. And all I'm doing here is doing a check to say right. If and I'm going to put another open square uh, open bracket here because I want to close this off. That is greater than one, then error. If it's fine then let it do what it needs to do on those formulas there yeah and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use an if statement for it to do the rest so if there's an error then do and do that error do close bracket so i've got a i've got a false there So what I'm going to do now, instead of doing like a nested if statement here, I'm going to use the ifs function where I can do multiple criteria So if I change this from an if to an ifs I've got the first value there, it's just going to give me an error now at NA because it hasn't found something that matches the logical the logical test here. So the next thing I want to check is if this equals one, then I want to set it to NS. So if I just copy that formula there, control copy. This is me very much thinking on my feet here, but is I've got the error. So let's do the next check. So if I do control V there equals one, then as far as the true statement, I just put equals N stroke S close bracket. And if I hit return to make sure there's no syntax error, that's fine. I'm then going to take the next one and again, just do a control Control copy, 
and escape. And then go into here and click at the end of the formula, do a comma, do a control V equals one, then I'm going to put an A and hit return. I'm going to take the next one, which is the vacation one. Control copy. Go into here. Click this out to get to the bottom. Click at the end. The form will do a comma. I'll paste that in. B equals one. Then because this is a, a vacation, I'm going to do A stroke L and hit return. And then I'm going to take the working one. Let's copy that. So click in here, go to the end of the formula. Comma, paste it, equals one, then put an X. Hit return. And now you see we've got an X because it's found that true statement there. And then I'm going to do finally is the out of office one. I'm going to copy that. Control copy. Escape, go into the formula. Comma, control V equals one. And if it's out of office, I'm going to do th three O's, two P, and return. So let's just test the error check here. So if I go into the rotor data and I take uh, Andy's there, if I make this the 23rd, as an example, and I go into there, there you go. So it's picked up the error. Fine, that's great. Um, and if I just put make, just to make sure that it's got, let's just change this to, uh, I've got a 23rd to the third. If I just put this as um, out of office, It's picked up the error, right? So that works. That's fine. So if I then go that, that, and we go back to here, it's now fine again. So I've now got everything in here that I want. But if there's no data on here to look at, I I want to be able to copy this formula down. If there's nothing to find, it'll then come up with an error, and I don't want that to appear in here. So I'm going to put one check on this overall formula and do if error, where if this is an error, I'm going to say to it, just leave it blank. But if there's no error there, then show me the result, like so. So I've now got this value here, and I want to copy it to here. So I should be able to just click, drag it over, and there you go. Now, what I'm going to do, I don't need those there actually. Um, if I select and do a control and replace. Now, if I just select the cell and do control find and then say, right, replace all, it will literally just do, look at the whole spreadsheet. I need to give it at least two cells, <laughs> excuse me, two cells to look at. So if I cancel that, and I do that, just select two cells, and then do control find. So I'm going to replace the AM with PM. So I've then got the PM and the AM, and I go into here and just do replace all, and do OK. I've then got that for Andy. I can then take these two here, 
and I can put them up here. So if I take that and do Control A to select it all and do Control Copy, Escape, and I go into this cell and do a Control V and return. And I take this one and do a Control A and copy. And go into here and do a Control V and return. I've then got the two entries for Andy as such. And now if I just close this down, I should be able to take these and just do Control Copy, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, and just do it across to the Sunday. Do control V. Then if I take this like so and just do a control copy, I should be able to then just paste that across there. And then if I go across like so. So at the moment I'm down to 17. So if I just scroll down control down now it's pulling through information for all these so next thing I'm gonna do so I don't need these formers now I've now checked that that all works fine so and again if I just copy these down to something that's not there it'll just leave it blank so that's fine so I'm just gonna delete that for a second I want it to format this stuff. So I'm just going to do a few things in here. Is that I want to visually change what's here. So first of all, I'm just going to go across and I'm going to do it. I'm going to select from the AM as well. I'm going to go all the way across yeah, to the Sunday. Like so. And I'm just going to put it to the center. Yeah. Um, and I am going to again select all this and I'm going to do some conditional formatting uh, and I'm going to go to the conditional formatting with them all highlighted and also here column F9 is my reference point here so F9 remember that F9 so if I do conditional formatting do new rule I'm going to do based on a formula and I'm going to do equals if F9 so I'm not going to put any um, any absolute references here I want it all to be relative to what it's looking at yeah is in here I'm going to say F9 if F9 equals N stroke S then um, you do something, yep. So if F9 equals NS, I'm gonna go, so if that's true, and it's true, and if it's false, and I tell it what to do with the formatting based on that being true. So if I go format, like so, is that all I want is a border. That's all I'm going to do. So if it's true, I'm going to put a border there and I'm not going to do anything else with it. I'm going to leave it blank. The only thing I will put in there is I'm just going to make the font bold and do OK. So if I then go click OK there, you can now see it's now put some formatting against that. So that's the that's the first one. Then if I do again with it all still highlighted, do new rule based on formula equals if F9 equals 
I. For absent, unplanned leave. I'm then going to put you know, true, comma, false. So what if it's got an A in there as far as unplanned leave? I'm going to do format. I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to make the text white. As far as the border color is concerned, I'm going to make that white and then just select like so. As far as the fill is concerned, I am going to put uh, this dark orange. Let's put this orange here, this dark orange here. And I'm going to click OK. So that's absent unplanned leave. So if I click OK there, and then click OK there. Obviously, nothing's changed because there's nothing there. Then if I go to um, the next one, which is AL, so I'm going to do conditional formatting and I'm going to do new rule in based on a format equals if if h sorry f9 equals al i stroke l so it's true doesn't it's false and let's set the format to be uh, let's put a as far as the fields concerned I'm gonna make it a dark green the border I'm gonna make it white like so the font is going to be white I'm gonna make it bold and if I click OK and then click OK again to apply it now set those there so you can see it's visually starting to stick out now let's look at X by working so I want it to be black and a white X there so I'm going to do again conditional formatting on the home ribbon new rule calculated equals if F9 equals X and it's true so do something otherwise it's false don't do anything and I'm going to do format so bold white text border is going to be white again and the fill is going to be black click OK and click OK again so there we go now we've got the the X is showing up, right? I'm then going to do the um, the next um, check here is going to be out of office, and I'm going to go conditional formatting, new rule, based on a formula, and I'm going to do equals if. F9 equals yeah. I'm going to do comma true false do something so formatting wise let's go with um, again fill let's make it a lighter blue there, border, let's make that white again. Uh, and let's do uh, the font. It's bold, and let's make it white. And do OK. And then click OK. And there's one more thing that we've not done here, which is the error. What happens with the error? Well, I want that to show out, so I'm going to make that red, bright red. So I'm going to go conditional formatting, new rule, use formula, equals if F9 equals error, then true, 
otherwise it's false don't do anything and based on that formatting wise I'm going to make it bold white in fact now I'm going to make it just red so it just sticks out as a red and then I go border it's going to be white and the fill is going to be red also if I click okay in fact I'm just going to make one change in there additional formatting manage rules this one I'm, I want to make that a little bit darker so I'm going to highlight that and hit edit and I'm going to go to the format and let's make that a slightly darker color okay and click okay and apply now it's now applying those rules so I'm just going to add one thing here and do error yeah and what I'm going to do now is just duplicate this formatting here so if I do a make all these central like so but I'm not going to put it there so let's undo that for a second let's take this let's copy it and let's put it in my static data so I'm going to put it over as a key and this will make sense later on and I'm just going to paste the values here so again go here copy static data paste the values only like so and there it is so it's got that as a reference then I can get rid of that from there and just delete it so that's gone so I've now got my formatting as far as visually what happens here the next thing I want to do is make sure that all of this formats if there's something there so if there's nothing here I still want the the grid lines here so I'm going to select all of it this time yeah I'm going to select all of it and I'm going to do a new rule and just just before I do that so we've now got b9 so that's what i'm looking at b9 so if i then go to um again new rule and this time it's it is going to be a a fixed point that i'm looking at here so if i go equals if it's going to be a fixed column b then the row needs to change yeah does not equal a blank then true comma false I close that and all I want it to do here is I want to put it a border in like so and click OK and then click OK and then what I'm going to do here is you'll notice now it's overwritten some of the formatting here which is fine so I then go into conditional formatting and manage rules and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this here I'm going to put this I'm going to move it down to the bottom yeah and one more time and then all I'm going to do is say to it, stop, if that's true, stop, and just tick this. So it doesn't go any further in these checks if these become true. And if I do apply, and OK, it now picks that up fine. So I've now formatted this. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to... to shrink this down at, at the top and do some cleaning up at the top here so I'm going to make you make you a green and then I'm going to put some some lines single lines around that like so um, this I want this all to be 
uh, again gray across so if I just go all the way across and I make yeah like so and again make it single yeah and then these here don't need to worry about that so don't need that anymore so I'm going to take that and I'm going to right click on it and hide that row I don't need it um, this I'm going to make these merge so merge and center merge and center this here all the way across I want that for that particular week merge and center and do the same for this merge and center uh, this here I'm going to put that as a again cell make it single before all these I am going to again make this gridded so again select the grid lines like so and now I'm going to just take this highlight all the columns here select them all and I'm just going to shrink them all down a little bit just so I can see this and if I then scroll over to the left just what I'm looking to try and do is to make sure I can see the whole thing on twice so again just move it slightly until I think I can see it there you go so I can now see that all on the same the same view and if I then go view remove grid lines you can now see that I've got the start of a rotor and if I go into the static data and change this to the the 30th of October like so then go back to here you can see it's automatically amended it and moved it if I change this to be by skill it then moves the information automatically for me and again if I went into rotor data and then just made um, Andy just duplicate what I've got there for Andy just put him there 23rd it creates an error and I go onto that two week rotor and I go um, and just put it to the 23rd again here at the data we can see there's those errors in that first week that I've I've created for Andy so that works and I can see the errors so again if I take that to the it should then be fine so That looks fine as far as the way the data is being uh, being presented. Now, what I want to do is I want this information now is as I'm adding team members, I want to automatically pick things up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, but and I'm going to literally go all the way down to 100 row 100 I'm going to do control D so I'm going to copy what's in there all the way down control D now and if I just look up here now you should see there are formulas in here so if I went into the team and I added somebody else into the team so let's do Daisy Valentine Daisy's a senior vet and she's contracted 30 hours in that week if I go to here you can see now that Daisy's been picked up automatically and it's automatically extended that view so that brings us 
to the end of this video and just to summarize and recap I, and I gotta make the point yes that was heavy going it was exhausting um, and we went through some pretty chunky stuff there but if you've stuck through to the end then amazing well done you what a star uh, I've got to say that you know we have gone through some pretty chunky concepts there we've gone through conditional formatting to enhance that visual on the view and to make things stick out dynamically we've learned how to build pretty chunky formulas and, and test your logic as you add to that formula and build it gradually and testing the logic as we go through so well done in the next video we will look at how to enhance the that visual even further we will do this by building the formula for the hours available and work allocated so i look forward to seeing you in the next video and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful day bye bye now